Hi everybody. Today's book is called From Seed to Plant. Since it's about seeds and plants, I thought I'd read to you from my garden. The last time we read a Gail Gibbons book, we read this book, How a House is Built. There's some construction going on across the street from my house. But they're building a house right now. You can see that construction worker up on the ladder. So you might hear some construction noise while I read today. It's all right. It's nice to be outside. Let's read from seed to plant. From Seed to Plant by Gail Gibbons. <clears throat> we know that something Gail Gibbons likes to do is put labels in her books, and she's done that in this book too. There's lots of labels about plants. It begins here. Tomato. Squash, violet, tulip, daisy, rose, pea, buttercup, and corn. Most plants make seeds. A seed contains the beginning of a new plant. Seeds are different sizes shapes, and colors. All seeds grow into the same kind of plant that made them. Here's a sunflower and the sunflower seed. Here's an oak tree and the acorn that made it. Many plants grow flowers. Flowers are where most seeds begin. Apple tree, zinnia, dandelion, aster. A flower is made up of many parts. Look what Gail Gibbons has done. She's drawn a picture of the flower and she's sliced it in half so that we can see the inside of the parts. This is the petal, the pink part. And then she's starting to, starting to talk about the things that are inside. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. That's this part. In the center of the flower is the pistil. It's this tall part. Stamens make yellow powder called pollen. That's these parts. The parts of the pistil. The parts of the flower around the pistil are the stamens. Here's the stem. At the bottom of the pistil are tiny egg cells called ovules. Before a seed can begin to grow, a grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. There's the stigma. Here's pollen, maybe came from this flower over here, landed on this one. Pollination happens in different ways. Often, wind blows pollen from flower to flower. Before we move on, let's see if we can look inside one of the flowers and see if we can see some of those parts. I'm going to go ahead and clip off one of these daffodils that's right near me and see if we can see inside of it. Let's look. Can you see the parts that Gail Gibbons was talking about? Let's check our book. See the stigma, the sticky parts. This one's pretty small. It's right here. I see the pollen on the stamen. Can you see that? Find the pollen on the stamen. If I touch it, it should turn my finger yellow. See that pollen on my finger? Came off and right there. Pistol is hard to see because of the yellow background, but it's there. Here's the pistol. 
we'll look at some tulips a little bit later and you can really see those parts really, really well. Let's find out how the pollination continues. Bees, other insects, and hummingbirds help pollinate too. While they visit flowers for their sweet juice called nectar, pollen rubs onto their bodies. Here's a bee inside of this flower with some pollen, and a hummingbird with pollen. Then they carry the pollen to another flower where it comes off onto its pistil. It's happening right there. If pollen from a grain, if a grain, if a pollen grain from a flower lands on the pistil of the same kind of flower, it grows along the tube through the pistil into an ovule. This is the beginning of a seed. We can see those. If I cut open our daffodil, cut it open right down here. see them right there. The seeds grow inside the flower even as the flower begins to die. As the seeds become bigger, a fruit or pod grows around them. The fruit or pod protects the seeds. When the fruit or pod ripens, it breaks open. The seeds are ready to become new plants. Some seeds fall to the ground around the base of the plant where they will grow. Some pods or fruits open and the seeds pop out. Sometimes when birds eat berries, they drop the seeds. Other seeds fall into streams, ponds, rivers, or the ocean. There they travel in the water until they stick to dirt along the shore. Look at this coconut. It fell from this tree, landed in the water, and the current carried it to this shore. A coconut is a giant kind of seed. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that lets them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Others have wings that spin as they fall. When I found my spot here on the ground, I was lucky enough to sit right next to a dandelion plant, and I have one of those fluffy seeds. It's stuck in the grass. This is a dandelion plant without the fluffy seed. The top part is where the seed will come from. Here it is. You've seen a dandelion puff before. There's one. That's the seed on the bottom, that brown part. And then these fluffy things help it fly. Watch what happens when I let this one go. It flew that way. There it is, right there. There's more. I let them go. Just like in the book. It's not very windy. They're not going very far today. Animals help scatter seeds too. They hide acorns and nuts in the ground. Some seeds have hooks that stick to the fur of animals or people's clothes. Later, they drop off onto the ground. A flower bed or vegetable garden is beautiful. Seeds are planted to grow in the gardens. The seeds come in small envelopes or boxes. Directions explain how to plant the seeds and care for the plants. The beginning of a plant is curled up inside of each seed. Food is stored inside the seed too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. If you're lucky enough to have beans at home, you can split open a bean and see the tiny plant that's right inside. A seed will not sprout until certain things happen. 
First, it must be on or in the soil. Then it needs rain to soak the seed and soften its seed coat. When the sun shines and warms the ground, the seed coat breaks open and the seed begins to grow. This is called germination. A root grows down into the soil. The root takes in water and minerals from the soil for food. Germination. Miguel Gibbons is showing us the roots. Up grows a shoot. Green leaves grow up from the shoot to ward the sun. The shoot is the beginning of the plant. It's just a little stem that sticks up before it has the leaves. The plant grows bigger and bigger. The leaves make food for the plant from the water and minerals in the soil, the sunlight, and the air all around the plant. Finally, the plant is full grown. Buds in the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Bud. Many of the foods people eat are seeds, fruits, and pods. They are full of nutrition, vitamins, and minerals, and they are tasty too. Gail Gibbons has given an experiment about ways to check on seeds. And we know that Gail Gibbons loves to put extra facts in the back of her books. What do you say? Scientists who study plants are called botanists. Some seeds sprout only in the heat of a forest fire. Some plants live only for one season. They are called annuals. It's a picture of a marigold. That's a type of annual. Other plants die at the end of the season but grow back the following year. They are called perennials. Plants in the desert, such as cactus plants, store water in their stems. They can live for a long time without rain. Mountain plants are short, so the wind can't blow them over. Plants move. Many flowers open in the morning and shut at night. Some close when it rains. Also, plants move toward light. Some plants eat insects. These plants live in the soil that don't have enough minerals for food. The biggest flower in the world grows on the island of Sumatra. It can weigh up to 25 pounds and can be four feet across. That's a lot of information about plants. Take a look at this book if you have it at home or watch this video again. Go outside and see if you can find some of the parts of a flower or look for evidence of seeds. Here's some tulips. As we get a little bit closer, you'll be able to see the stigma and the stamen. The stigma is the sticky yellow part in the center. And on these plants, the stamen are almost sort of black or even kind of purple. Take a walk outside and see if you can see a stigma or a stamen in any tulips or plants in your neighborhood.